North Carolina is one of the largest livestock producing states in the nation. That kind of production is facing new scrutiny as states deal with air and water quality issues. Solving the problem is going to demand more cooperation between agriculture and education. Four generations of the Tyndall family have raised hogs in North Carolina, a state second only to Iowa in the production of pork for dinner tables in the U.S. and overseas. And with millions of pigs in the state, producers are faced with, as you might expect, lots of waste. Our waste was basically dumped in our holding lagoons and then applied on our pasture land and our hay fields. In North Carolina and elsewhere, the conventional method of handling animal waste was to flush hog pens into manure lagoons, where solids settled to the bottom. The nutrient-rich lagoon water was often used as a fertilizer, but there were ongoing concerns about lagoon water leaking into rivers and streams, and there was a limit to how much of the material could really be used as a soil nutrient. Over the years, we seem to be building up excessive nutrients in the soil, so we have to find a better way to protect the land that we have. If we were to have a major storm that caused overflows or breaks of these lagoons, we would have a major environmental issue. So North Carolina began researching ways to eliminate lagoons, providing financial incentives to farmers, researchers, and others seeking a solution. Private industry joined with North Carolina State University and the U.S. Department of Agriculture to develop a treatment that met environmental targets. The solution involved a procedure that collects the waste in large tanks, separating solids and water, allowing each to be processed independently and controlling effluent chemicals. And when we do that, we remove uh, the, with the solids half the nitrogen, 70% of the phosphorus, and 98% of the copper and zinc, those nutrients from that waste stream on the farm. Another critical requirement in state standards was improving air quality. The new process helps eliminate the release of gases like ammonia and methane. This treatment system reduces those by 97 percent and basically reduces the carbon footprint of this hog farmer by 6,500 metric tons of carbon per year. The statewide public-private cooperative effort provided physical as well as environmental benefits. And the state's financial incentives provided assistance to farmers. Animal health improved from changes to the air and water. Less mortality, better rate of gain, basically equals more money in our pocket. In addition to concerns about air and water quality, the collected waste solids could now be used in a plant compost mixture. So here we have the end product. You've got a soil amendment, a container mix, and you can do a lot of other things with this. Yes, we, the uh, soil amendment and the container mixes are products that we're now selling on the market for two years or more, and they've done very well. Uh, we're also uh, developing an ag-grade fertilizer, a fairway mix for golf courses. But beyond the agricultural benefits, research is also underway, turning waste into plastics. We're also looking at plastic production and have actually produced some uh, polyethylene plastic or with 40% swine solids in it and have been able to produce what's called a widget to determine strength and usability for various purposes. Research on technology like this is one tool helping farmers to become better stewards of the land, benefiting producers and consumers. We're just trying to protect our land. There's no more land being created, so we have to protect what we have. <laughs>